along with Aaron Bailey, and we are here with another episode of What Do You Need to Know to Move to Costa Rica. Today, the topic is renting versus buying a car. Uh, we've both we've both rented, we've both bought. Uh, Aaron, you rented for a lot longer than I, so I think that this topic is one that you get a lead. Take it away. I rented for a lot longer because I was forced to, because I ordered a car and it took a long time to arrive. It high demand Suzuki Jimny, everyone wants them. Um, and then once it got to the country, the government's computers were screwed up with paperwork and I, I don't understand it all, but it took quite a while. It took like four or five months uh, to get my car. And so I ended up renting for a long time, actually. I, and I rented uh, Patrick's car while he was out of the country, oh, used his right. car. I've rented from, I think, four or five different agencies uh, in, in Costa Rica. So I, unfortunately, I am an expert when it comes to renting cars in Costa Rica. I don't want to be. Um, but now that I have a car, thank goodness, I hopefully never have to do that again. So let's, let's talk about the difference, right? Um, renting is really expensive in Costa Rica. Um, a lot of times you'll get a quote uh, for a rental car for like a dollar a day, but the taxes and fees and mandatory insurance that, that is added on top of that makes it a 50 to a hundred dollars a day uh, rental. Um, so, you know, that adds up really quickly. If you're here for 90 days, let's say you're going to stay in the country for 90 days and then you're going to go back to the States. Um, you know, 90 days is a, is a long, is, is gets very expensive to rent a car. Um, you know, there are some agencies that will work with you to give you long-term rates. Um, sometimes, um, you know, some agencies here are, around the world are horrible. Um, so yeah, it, you, it all depends. You've, you've had all kinds of types of agencies. And I think, you know, to your point, you kind of get what you pay for. Like you've, you've, because you've had these long term, you've had to buy, get cheaper cars and they've broken down on you. How many tires did you go through or how many breakdowns did you I've go through? I've like, gone through three, three different tires. Yeah. yeah. No, no breakdowns, I don't think. But, um, you know, it, it, the biggest thing is just dealing with an agency when you, you know, you you take a, an all day flight from the United States, you're, you're laying over like Houston or Atlanta or Miami or wherever, and then you get to Costa Rica. Finally, it's late afternoon. The last thing you want to do is go stand in line for two hours at a car rental agency. Mm -hmm. uh, is some, I won't name names, but there was an agency. Every time I've rented from them, it's a two hour process just to pick up a car. Same with returning. There was no one ever there just to, crazy. Up, to, to, to take the car on, on return. So that really adds to, you know, quality of life, quality of trip. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't want to spend two hours and then drive two hours to, to the beach. So I, I never had that experience. Like I oh never had that experience, but, but I think you also said like every time I, I come in and I would, you know, before we, like when I was out and I was touring and looking for houses and before we actually bought our house and I was renting um, a, a car, you were always like, why are you spending so much? Well, maybe I was paying so I didn't have to have that line. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, these were really expensive, um, you know, global brands. Yeah. Crazy. Um, so, you know, the, I think that the number one advice I'd give is you see this online in all the forums, like for tourists coming to Costa Rica, um, they, they're, they're scared of the mandatory fees and taxes and insurance that are, get that get added to your bill. Call them up ahead of time and say, I want to know exactly what it's going to cost me to rent this car when I show up in Costa Rica uh, mm. and tell me that um, because you don't want to wait until the very last minute. But the yeah. big thing here in renting a car is that mandatory insurance uh, mandated by the government of Costa Rica, it's like $16, $17, $18 a day, and that adds up very quickly. So there comes a tipping point in the number – let's say you're moving to Costa Rica part-time. Like Patrick, Patrick is, is in Costa Rica you know, probably half-time. Mm -hmm. there, there's a tipping point at which – it's cheaper to buy a car than it is to rent. Yep. 
Patrick, I, did you go through that that calculation, or did you just want to buy a car no matter what? No, I think it's because we knew that when we came, we'd be here for longer periods per trip. It's not yeah. the frequency; it's the duration. So we knew that if we were going to come for two months, you know, I I come to country two months, come back to the states for two months, Costa Rica for two months. So because of that, it would add up too fast. Yeah. And so we we knew very quickly to to buy, and we're going to get into buying used versus new. But um, uh, I always felt like if I was just doing a three week trip, why would I ever buy? Right. Right. I think that that number is probably around 90 days per year. Um, if I've done the, the calculations correct, we've, we've got a spreadsheet and we'll link that in the comments below that allows you to plug in some numbers to play um, with your specific situation. If you're going to be here 90 days or 180 days or 30 days or 365 days, you know, right. it helps you kind of figure out what it's going to cost you to, to rent a car versus to buy a car um, and maintain it and pay for, uh, you know, the license plates and, and the, the yearly government fees. Uh, so we'll link that in, in the description below. So yeah, right, buying so a car. Buying. Yeah. Buying. Um, first of all, it's not that difficult. Uh, mm -hmm. a lot of people were, you know, think that buying a car in Costa Rica is, is, is difficult. You and I both bought a new car each. We did not buy a used car. Uh, we have friends who have bought used cars before. Mm -hmm. um, fairly straightforward, very similar to the US. You'll want to have a, a mechanic with you to kind of take a look at it and make sure that it's uh, functioning and, and you're not getting scammed. Uh, the process from there is you, you work with an attorney, I believe. So that's a little bit uh, unlike the United States, you can't just walk into the, the DMV uh, and, and register that that uh, transaction. You have to work th with an attorney. So there's there's you know five hundred dollars or so for a used car for a used for car. a used car completely for a used car, um, uh, not for a new car that they handle that all at the dealership. Um, but you know buying a car a used car is fairly straightforward. Um, there are websites you can go and find really great quality cars. One thing I think we should state here is that cars don't depreciate in value like they do in the United States. Yeah. Uh, I bought my new car um, and there were three year old versions of my car selling online for about the same price as I could buy it new. So, you know, a lot of times it just makes sense to buy new and sell it three years later. And, you don't lose much money. For me, I I went out to my um, my group of friends and contacts, and a lot of them are expats or ticos. Well, they're all expats or ticos, but but it was uh, you know people that had lived in the country for a long time or grew up in the country. And I said, "Give me a good used car dealer, like that you would trust." Mm. I did not get one recommendation because I was planning on buying mm. used. Wow. I did not get one recommendation. I have subsequently gotten several, uh -huh. but um, at the time I was like, okay, well that answers the question. And I wanted warranty and those types of things. Yeah. Um, a lot of times used car, you go through, through, you know, private parties. Weirdly enough though, there are certain places like Gracia. Um, Gracia mm -hmm. has so many car dealerships both mechanics and dealerships, used car dealerships. And they all kind of gather in the same areas and you can just walk one to, to the next, to the next, to the next. But but I didn't get any recommendations. Mm. So it, I, I think that if you were going to buy used, you need to be in the country and you need to have, yeah. you can't, you can't, I bought my car sight unseen. Yeah. Like, right. like brand I, new. Or, I, yeah. Yeah, I ordered yeah. it brand new. I didn't buy it yeah. off the lot. They had to order it into the country. Um, you know, they had them coming, but I, I said, yeah. this is, this is the model I want. This is the package I want. This is the color I want. They said, great. It'll be in, in three weeks. Um, right. but if I was buying used, I would not do it through like an auto trader in the States. You have to go and, and see them yeah. up in person. Yeah, absolutely. What, um, what else do we need to know about buying a car? Well, I think the the other thing for buying a car, and this isn't necessarily, 
it's really about like what 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 do you need a car for? People come here and they're like, I need a four by four because uh, it's a hilly country. Uh-huh. If you live in the Central Valley, you don't. Do you need no. a snorkel? Do you need a snorkel? Not unless you're going to cross a lot of rivers. No. Um, you know, like like there's a lot of things that people think. It's like it's kind of like buying a house here. People make a lot of assumptions. So I think you have to think about what is it you want the car for. Now, I you see that a, a very large percentage are uh, SUVs, uh, yes. especially new, but that's true everywhere. Electric cars are becoming more and more popular. You see, a, especially a lot of the um, Chinese mm-hmm. brands uh, and the South Korean brands, you see electric. Um, there are charging stations. They're not as easy to find as in the States, but you can find them. Yeah. Um, My building has um, one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. My next door neighbor installed a charging station at their house. Um, I think that's it for buying. I mean, it, it isn't a hard process at all. I, it, it, no. it, like, I, I, I'd say the hardest thing for me was, and your process was a little different than mine. We both worked with very large groups, auto dealer groups. Mm-hmm. For mine, I had to bring a translator with me uh, and everything had to be translated um, into English because all the documents are in Spanish. Um, the translator had to sign in front of the notary. Hmm. Like it, it was all very, you know, what, but that's all you need to know. They said, bring a translator. Okay. Um, and even if I was almost fully fluent, I think they would still have me bring a translator. Okay. So the next, so the next question is once you got the car insurance. Easy, really easy. Uh, I, I, I think we have the same insurance company, same yeah insurance agent. It's very similar to the United States. You find an agent um, and you sign up online and you pay your, your bill online. That's it. Like there, there's just not much to it. Uh, I think we pay 60 some dollars a month, uh, 60, $70 a month uh, for f- full coverage with a $500 deductible. Uh, I pay every three months instead of every year. There's just not much to say about insurance. Well, the one thing I would say about insurance is a lot of people in this country are not insured. Uh, not just car. There are mandatory insurances here, but it's very, but there's a lot of people that, you know, if you think that there's an uninsured motorist challenge in the States or Canada, uh, the uninsured motorist challenge in Costa Rica is huge. Um, you know, there are a lot of homes that aren't insured either, which still baffles me. But I think in insurance, like, I err, and I think you did the same. I err on the side of overinsuring because there are too, so many people that are underinsured. So I have I have kind of the the platinum package, and yeah, like you said, I you know it's not it's not that expensive. Mine somehow for some reason mine's less than yours. I pay less than that, um, but you know the package the, the insurance. Yeah, it's an easy process. Every, I do everything online. I can check my insurance online. The insurance provides roadside assistance. Uh, if um, we, Neither one of us had to use it, so I don't know how that will work. But um, yeah, insurance is good. I think what I might fi- pay more. I think I might pay more because my car is cooler than yours. Uh, okay. Aaron's car has its <laughs> own Instagram account. It does. Salta, Salta Montico. Salta Montico, little, little grass grasshopper. Hopper. Yeah, it's a fun little car. It's, anyway, it's a thing. It's a thing. Moving you, on. Digre- you digress. Uh, I digress. Finan- financing. financing. You're probably not going to get financing here as a foreigner. Uh, you got to come with cash. Come with cash in hand. Um, I've heard of people that that have attempted to finance, but it, it's going to be uh, you're going to jump through so many hoops, and I don't think it's possible. So no. your best bet is just to come with cash. I when I. I actually financed mine through my escrow. Um, so when I was closing escrow on my house, I added the extra money to pay for the car so that everything was paid through escrow, meaning that it had already been vetted in the country. It had already gone through all the background checks and they just paid the check. It was super seamless. Um, but yeah, there is no financing. You can't get financing for a house. You can't get financing for a car. We are not residents and even residents would have a hard time. Right. So there right. you go. Yeah. Two other things we'll briefly talk about. Um, one is driver's licenses, and the second is toll roads. Which one do you want to take? Toll roads, my favorite 
Uh, you know, there's a thing called Quick Pass that uh, you can get from your bank. Uh, you go into your bank, ask for Quick Pass, you stick it up in your window. Every time you go through a toll, it deducts uh, from your bank account. Um, otherwise, if you're going through, you know, a toll, you can either tap your credit card on the side um, or pay cash. Um, tolls are not that expensive here, so it's not that big a deal. But uh, eventually, if you get a bank account, get a quick pass at the same time because it'll save you so much time. You can zip through those and not even have to stop. I I got it down to where I had this huge jar of colones and I try to just grab out just the right amount and not have to pay with paper. Quick pass saved my life. I love that it, thing. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing you have to have in your car, you, you want a quick pass in the car. The other thing you have to have in your car technically is a passport. If until, you are a tourist, until you're a resident, until you have a Costa Rican driver's license, you have to keep your U S passport or your foreign passport in the car with you so that when you get pulled over, which I have, uh, you give them your driver's license, my, my U S driver's license and my passport. And they take a look at it. Once Wait. my residency goes through and I get my Costa Rican driver's license, I won't have to do that. And it is a pain in the ass. And it's, I mean, you just have to know, like you can't complain about it. It is what it is. So, yep. um, a lot of people have mercies for the guys so that you keep your passport with you at all times. Just saying. I just keep it in the car. I don't take it with me. You do? Yeah. I shouldn't say that publicly, but yeah. Aaron, we might yeah. have edit that out. I hide it. I hide it. So you're never going to find it, people. But yes. Ooh, stealth salt, Montego. I love it. Yes. So, so the ultimate rule of thumb, Aaron, buy versus rent, what's the threshold? I think it's around 90 days in the country um, or it's you don't want the hassle of dealing with a car rental. But again, only uh, you can figure that out for yourself. Link, you know, link to that spreadsheet that we've got, make a copy of it and uh, do the math yourself, do the rough calculation yourself and uh, figure it out. If you're going to be here for a few weeks a year, then don't buy a car. If you're going to be here for 90 days, you might want to consider buying a car. Yeah. And, but I would say the caveat of that is not 90 days and then you're not going to be back for nine months. Like no, if, per year, if, 90 days per yeah. year. Yeah. But, but it has to be, you have to think about where you're going to keep that car. Sure. You know, there's a lot right. of other things to think about, but again, if you have questions on any of that, Aaron is the expert here. So talk to Aaron <laughs> or me by reaching out to, we I'm just saying, go for it. Yep. Uh, hola at your portavita.com, H O L A at your portavita.com. You can get all of our links to our blog and our website and other videos at your portavita.com slash links. Um, most importantly, engage with us, send us a note, put something in the comments and let us know, by the way, that link will be in the comments for, um, or the description for the, the, um, spreadsheet spreadsheet. But get to know us. Let us know how we can help you make your decision about Costa Rica. If you are on the fence of, is this the right place to come? That's what we're here for. You know, we, yeah. we yes, we, we, we have a business that helps people figure out how to move here and how to thrive once they're here. But even if you don't want to be part of that business, we want to hear from you. We want to make sure that Absolutely. you are really excited about being here. Because we are. Hi. Yep, we are. All right. Yes. And with that... Until next time, we end with what, Aaron? Pura Vida. Pura Vida.